This is Algebra 2, Chapter 5, Section 1, in which we will be studying operations with polynomials. Now before we do that, we need to remind ourselves some of the rules that we learned in Algebra 1 as far as exponents. This is nothing new at this point, this is just review, refreshing your memory more than anything else. When we multiply two terms that have the same base, x to the a times x to the b, the rule says you add the powers, x to the a plus b. When you divide, it's a similar idea, but division is the opposite of multiplication. So instead of adding powers, we'll do the opposite, we'll subtract them, x to the a minus b. If we have a negative power, x to the negative a, the rule says it needs to go into the denominator and become positive. So it becomes 1 over x to the positive a. Similarly, if it's already in the denominator, then it will move up to the numerator to become a positive power. You just take those negatives and stick them in your pocket and save them for later. If we have a power inside a power, x to the a raised to the b power, you multiply the powers, x to the a b. If you have a product being raised to a power, x y to the a power, the power out here distributes to these two. It's not technically distributive property, but it's close enough for your purposes. Each term gets that power from the outside, so x to the a times y to the a. If it's a quotient on the inside, same thing happens. That power, again, distributes. Not the right word, but close enough. And then everyone's favorite, anything to the zero power is automatically one. The exception is 0 to the 0 power. That's undefined. But anything else to the 0 power is 1. Rules you already know should be familiar with. Our main objective today is we're going to be simplifying polynomial expressions. Now, for us to say that it's been simplified, we have to meet four criteria, four rules. These are four things you need to look at to decide whether you've got the uh, final answer or not. First rule is you can't have powers of powers. On the last page we had that x to the a to the b power. You can't leave it like that. You have to clean that up using that rule from the first page. Each base, each variable may appear exactly once in a term. You can't leave x squared times x fifth. You would need to combine that together to make x to the seventh. Fractions have to be reduced. If you have 9 6, you need to reduce that to 3 halves. You don't have to make it a mixed number, but you do need to reduce it. And we don't do negative exponents. You use the rules to move it to the opposite side of the fraction bar. If it was on top, it moves bottom. If it was in the bottom, it moves top and becomes positive power. So four rules you need to be able to follow to decide if you have things simplified or not. So let's get down to the simplifying. We have 2a to the negative 2 times 3a to the third b squared times c to the negative 2. Okay. 2 times 3 is 6 times 1 from here. 6 times 1 is 6. The a's, I have two a's here. I have an a negative 2 and I have an a3. Well, we'll combine those together. And I'm going to write it out in here. I'm going to type it out for you so that you see that's what I'm doing. Normally, I would skip this step and just go straight to the end. B's don't have any partners, so it just comes over. C doesn't have a partner, so it just comes over. 
Now, negative 2 plus 3 is 1, power of 1. The b squared is still okay. c to the negative 2 has to move down to become positive because we can't leave negative powers. You'll notice I didn't put the 1 here on the a. It's understood to be a 1 if there's nothing else there. If it helps you to put it, put it. Not going to complain. Here we have a quotient problem. Well, the quotient rule said subtract power, so we'll do that. q to the 2 minus 7 and r to the 4 minus 3. Again, I would probably skip this step if I were doing it myself, but I'm showing you where I got things. If it helps you to write that step out, please feel free. 2 minus 7 is negative 5. 4 minus 3 is 1 for the r, so I don't need to put it. Q5, Q negative 5 is a negative power, so it needs to move down. Notice in both cases, everything didn't move down, just the part that had the negative power, just the Qs, just the Cs moved down. Okay. One more of this nature, we have negative 2, a to the 4th over b squared. Now we saw earlier that the rule is you distribute this power to everybody. Where a lot of people go wrong is they try to just do negative 2 times negative 3, but that's not what the rule says. The rule says it gets it as a power. So negative 2 to the negative 3 a to the 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. b to the 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. Now, seeing this negative power here, I'm going to drop that to the bottom. And I'm going to punch into my calculator negative 2 to the third power. And I get negative 8. And remember that negative power means it moved down. A to, the 12th has, a to the negative 12th has a negative power, so it moves down. B to the negative 6 also has a negative power, so it moves up and becomes B to the 6. Okay. Another idea we need to discuss is the idea of a degree of a polynomial. It's the degree of the highest powered term that the polynomial has. We talked earlier in the year about how to find the degree of each term. So now our job is to figure out which one is the biggest. Well, in this case, our first term has powers on the variables of 5 and 1. 5 and 1 makes a total of 6. Okay. This term, 9x to the 4th, y to the 3rd, the variables have powers of 4 and 3, which makes 7. Notice we don't count 1 for the number. We only count powers for the variables. This term has variables of x and y. 1 and 1 makes 2. Who's the biggest? 7 is the biggest, so this one has a degree of 7. Okay. And now we get to the part that we're really working toward, is putting these things into simplest form. We're combining like terms is the basic idea. So let's collect up like terms. 3x squared is the only x squared in the problem, so it's going to go along by itself. Negative 2x plus negative x makes negative 3x. Negative 6 plus 1 makes negative 5. Okay. Our second problem features a subtraction. And a lot of times people get messed up with subtraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute this negative to all of these terms and make it into an easier problem to work with. The first set of parentheses don't really need the parentheses, so I'm just going to drop those. Negative of x squared 
negative of 2x and negative of 5 gives us these terms at the end. And now it's just a matter of collecting like terms. So negative 2x squared minus 5x minus 1. Okay. We've added, we've subtracted, now it's time to multiply. Don't worry, we'll do division another time. First off is a fairly simple one, negative 2a times a bunch of stuff. Well, the rule would be you want to distribute. So negative 2a times negative 3a squared is 6a cubed. Negative 2a times negative 11a is a positive 22a squared. Negative 2a times 20 is a negative 40a. Okay. Nothing is alike, so we're done. We can use the same idea when we have bigger things to multiply together. We can just repeatedly distribute until everything in the first parenthesis has been multiplied by everything in the second parenthesis. So x squared times x, x squared times negative 4, 4x times x, 4x times negative 4, 16 times x, 16 times negative 4. Then we look at the terms that we have and see if we can collect anything. Negative 4x squared plus 4x squared cancels out. Negative 16x plus 16x cancels out. So we're left with x cubed minus 64. And as before, at this point, I'm going to ask you to pause your video, solve this problem, try it out. Don't forget to collect your light terms. Come back and check your answer. So just like above, I'm going to distribute everything. 2x squared to each one, negative 4x to each one, and 5 to each one. And then we'll collect like terms, negative 2x squared and negative 12x squared makes negative 14x squares. 4x plus 5x makes 19x. So 6x cubed minus 14x squared plus 19x minus 5. As always, hopefully if you had questions along the way, you wrote those down. Bring them in so you can ask them. And we will see you in class.